Hey everyone, haven't done one of these in a while. Um, hope everyone's been well. Um, just wanted to do a video to kind of catch up, um, show you guys what I've been working on. Uh, mainly lately, I've been mired in the uh, AI. So, and if you followed me on Twitter, you've probably seen a few things like um, where I, as an experiment, I tried to see if I could have the computer cycle through every single possible combination and find the best one. Um, that didn't work out so well. It's uh, just too many combinations, but I figured, hey, couldn't hurt to try, try it. Um, I, I've gone, since then, I've gone back to my original plan, which is to cycle through each counter one by one, and it assesses the current situation, and it assesses who's moved, who hasn't, what its combat odds are in certain situations, and obviously how far it can actually travel. Um, now, at the start of each scenario, uh, I give all the counters what I've been calling a posture, which is um, basically what, what their behavior is going to be at a very high level. Um, during the course of the scenario, it can change, but at the very start, they all have some kind of way they behaved, which coincides with how, how it was in battle, the real, how it was historically. Um, in addition, they have a, a starting target hex that they're moving towards, um, which usually is, you know, some where another opponent lies. Um, but, you know, later on down the line might be a scenario where they're trying to get to a specific hex. Uh, right now, I've only worked on uh, Hieronia, or Chironia in English. I like to pronounce it the Greek way. And Granicus. So those are the two scenarios I'm going to show you. And you'll get to see a few of the different behaviors that the counters have been programmed to do. Um, so here you can actually see the setup for uh, Chironia. And uh, you can see it's currently the human player, which is, this is the Macedonian side, um, which I'll be controlling. And down here you have the Greek contingent, which is Athens, Thebes, and assorted others. Um, and... Historically, if you don't know, um, it looked something like this. So, and this is upside down, so forgive me, and the colors are a little bit backwards. So, initially, what Philip did was Philip, Philip took his side of the line and he actually moved forward, even though this graph is showing it, uh, everyone going back. He moved forward to sort of lure the Athenian side of the Greek line to come forward and follow him. He then moved backwards, um, and that's what this is showing. Alexander was on this side, and um, he just kind of sat in, in wait and took his chance once the Athenians followed back to do the hammer and chisel, as they call it, to swoop in from the flank and surround the Athenians and wreak havoc. Um, now, coding all that would be somewhat difficult, but I, I did want to at least give it the, the flavor of the battle, um, even though at once as a human, once you start making moves, things might change. Um, but you'll see at the very start, they, they sort of move in that way. Um, so I'll, I'll actually not do anything here. I'm just going to let the uh, Macedonians stay. And you can see a little bit how the Athenians are going to um, move. All right, so you can see they've they've moved forward. I mean, pretty simple. The the right side has hasn't moved. Uh, this Athenian side has has gone forward. Um, and now is a good time for me to mention some of these behaviors that I briefly talked about at the beginning. So every counter has falls into one of these buckets and I might add more. There's like retreat recon that I don't, I haven't needed yet, but might be uh, coming. Um, but these so far, everything, every counter falls into one of these categories. Um, attack is pretty obvious. It means the counter is looking for the best possible attack. He's trying to hurt you. Um, guard and defend are very closely related. Guard, I have it as they're, they hang out at a certain square, oh, sorry, hex, and 
as soon as someone gets close to to that hex, uh, it's not really visual contact, but kind of what I call it. Um, they're allowed to leave that hex and come after you. So as soon as soon as you get close, they they come a running. Um, defend on the other hand, they it's almost the same as guard, except instead of waiting for you to get in visual range, they wait a little bit longer for you to come right up on them and attack them. So they're waiting for you to attack and then they're going to fight back and allowed to chase you. Hard defend, on the other hand, almost exactly identical as defend, except they're not allowed to chase you. So the cases where I would use hard defend is there, let's say there's a, a scenario where they, you have to capture that hex as part of a victory condition. Um, they're going to stay on that hex no matter what. So they're not going to chase you. They're not going to leave that hex. Um, then we get to March, which is usually, so far I've only used this at the start of the two scenarios that I've coded. Um, so they, this is where they're just heading towards that initial target hex that I talked about. Um, pretty simple. Uh, and again, though, w once they come in uh, visual contact, as I call it, they, they're allowed to deviate from that and engage in, in, it turns into an attack at that point. Now, hard march is kind of the sibling to hard defend. Hard march is they're heading for a specific hex and they're not allowed to deviate. They're, no matter what, they're on that route and they're gonna get there as soon as possible. Once they reach that hex, it's gonna turn into hard defend. Um, so almost identical, except this is, I guess, the mobile version of this. Um, trigger guard and trigger defend, I'm actually going to talk about when I show you the Granicus scenario. So for right now, let's just continue with this um, Caronia and, and see what happens. So again, I'm not going to do anything and it's going to cycle and um, now you're going to see Athenians moving up again. So now you see that these units also activated and followed. So kind of like what happened um, from the accounts that I've read uh, it, where you know there, there's a kind of mid-range contingent that decided to follow but they didn't follow initially so I'm, I'm kind of trying to recreate that um, basically the idea here is to split up these two halves um, and, and kind of that's I, I I think good enough to to at least start the scenario um, and I, I could still have, and I'm still tossing up some other ideas of how to uh, engage based on what the human player does. Um, but I, my goal for this is sort of to keep it as uh, close to board game uh, soloable rules as possible. Like, I don't want to overcomplicate it with what the computer can do. Um, like, when you're playing this, you don't have to think about any of this AI stuff. But if, uh, you know, if, if this was ever a board game hint, hint, it'd be nice if uh, you can easily play both sides. And uh, so that's kind of the goal of, you know, doing an AI that's believable, but also playable. Um, all right. So now that was turn two. And like I said, these guys came forward. So the other trigger that I have is turns time wise. So uh, at, as we go to the next turn and the next turn, different like, like you just saw, different units might get activated and they might change what they do. So uh, right now, these guys over here, these Thebans, are still in defend mode. So they're not going anywhere. Um, they're still thinking about stuff. So I'm going to, again, not do anything with the Macedonians. And you can see what happens. All right. So now you're seeing suddenly the red lines on the screen and uh i haven't even told you about what these blue lines are but you probably figured out they're just trailing lines for the for the ai's movement and i i included them just so i can kind of see what they're doing and then go back and tweak if if i see weird stuff happening oh and we're already on to turn four um the red lines are the units targeting a, a specific hex so you you can actually see what the ai is thinking right now uh so the so this, for example, this counter here said he wants to get to this counter, but you can see he's getting blocked by these um, comrades over here. So he uh, and the stacking limit doesn't let him go on top. So he's going to try to find a way around. 
These guys, which on turn three did get activated and decided to come into battle, have all picked targets directly in front of them, um, which, you know, s- sort of coincides with uh, how they would march anyway. Like you saw initially when these guys were moving, they didn't have the red lines. They were just marching to the initial hexes that I told them to, that I coded in at the beginning. Whereas these guys assessed what is my best fight option based on proximity, based on who's there. Um, and they still decided to go forward because they see there's already enough you know, guys over here engaging. So I'm just gonna go to the, the closest empty guy. Um, and that's pretty much it. And from, from there on, they, they just start fighting. Uh, so now though, um, I don't want to show you too much of the fight. It just, it can get chaotic, but what I do want to show you is the contrast to what happens in Granicus. So I'm going to reload this and you'll see the Granicus setup. A second here. All right. All right. So now we're in Granicus, uh, and just a really brief overview. Uh, now the Macedonians are fighting the Persians. Bit different here, we've got a river that cuts through the middle of the battlefield, and the Persians historically just sort of waited on the other side. Um, so they're just hanging out here and just waiting to see what these Macedonians do, and they're going to react to it. They also had this contingent back here uh, made up mostly of mercenaries, Greek mercenaries. So that's why they've got the blue line here. Um, and they, these guys didn't really take part in the battle until at the very end when it was all said and done. And the Macedonians just pretty much surrounded them and um, slaughtered them, went to town or enslaved them. Um, so for this battle, because it's a little bit different, I wanted to tweak the AI, and that's where I added the two others that you saw, Trigger Guard and Trigger Defend. Um, so I'm going to explain it first. Now I'm going to tell you that this line right here is all Trigger Defend, and then these guys in the back are Trigger Guard. Now, if I had just set all these counters to be Defend, and you came down and attacked one of them, he would awaken and chase you, fight you, whatever. Um, but the rest of these guys would just sit there watching. So that's not what I wanted. Uh, obviously, once once you cross over, it's on, right? We want everyone to jump in. So that's where trigger defend comes in. So once once you all these guys are at part of the same trigger defend group, and I could even split them up and, and get even more granular. But right now, the, this entire line is trigger defend is what I'm calling it. Now, if I come close, I'm just going to click here. Um, you can see they're not going to do anything, even though I'm like literally right there. And we'll see if we could go to a second turn. I'll go right next to them. Um, and, and they're not going to react. Um, and actually, you know what? I'm going to bring this guy all the way across to down to here so you can see the difference in how they how they behave um all right it's just gonna cycle through oh and i should mention here nothing is finalized the disclaimer everything's under construction um so things are going to change uh so all right we'll move this guy first he's he's his goal is to get down here and bother these guys um this guy is going to come right here next to him so now a little question or th- thing that I'm still playing with. Um, when when these guys are in defend mode, I'm kind of going back and forth with whether or not they should attack. Um, you know, I've played Men of Iron um, where with the Skilltron in Falkirk where they just sort of sit there. Um, but, you know, if you're, if they're within reach, I'm thinking even if they're in defend mode, they should still be able to reach out at you and um, attack. Uh, but Problem is then there's a chance that they get uh, retreated, so they would move off the hex. So I don't know, still something I'm playing with. So if you have an opinion on that, please feel free to leave a comment. We'd love to hear what your thoughts are. Um, but right now, if I finish movement uh, and go into ranged fire, I'm actually going to skip this and skip close combat, even though now I'm eligible. You could see. Uh, oh. 
no, no, it's my turn again. Great. <laughs> so what you're going to see is that they're not going to, they're still not going to do anything, even though uh, I'm right there. Um, so I'll, I'll skip this turn again. And what you're seeing, by the way, is uh, the initiative goes, you know, there's, there's a role that's happening at the beginning for who goes first. Probably should have explained that. Um, so all right, we'll go here. Um, all right. So it just cycled through Persia's turn again, and they didn't do anything. So like I said, I might change that where they can, they can attack you if you're literally sitting right there adjacent. Um, All right, so now um, I actually am going to attack them. Actually, I'll cancel that. We'll say done movement, and we'll go to range combat, and I will now fire on them. So this guy's got a range of one um, on horseback. He can also, obviously, these guys can all do uh, close combat. Now, you don't see it, and now we go into close combat. You don't see it, but these guys are now all sort of, awaken shall we say uh so if we can get to their turn um actually um i'm gonna move this guy out of the way uh we'll get to their turn and you'll see now how the difference in their behavior all right so now they're all now they're all in the game. Now they're all uh, crossing the river. Um, not historical, but you you attacked them with the one unit. Probably not a good idea. Um, but now they're just all over. You can see these guys chose chose to attack this guy over here um, because he was he was the closest one. Um, whereas these guys reached the best possible uh, combat ratio. So that, you know once they reached that four to one. All these other guys went elsewhere, and they're and they're chasing this line down down here. Um, so let's just finish this up. Finish up these. Uh, oh, oh man, that's a good close combat. So they just took out my unit here. Um, great, and now it's going to be my turn again, which is it is. I'm glad I didn't lose this unit because I want to show you what happens over here. So you can see still these guys here haven't reacted. And as I told you before, these guys are in trigger guard mode um, where they're just going to wait till they see visual contact. Again, this is not historical, but for game purposes, um, I, let's say if this did happen historically, I feel like they would have, if they saw a lone unit coming down the line, they probably would have said, okay, you know what, let's go attack him. Uh, so that's kind of how I'm playing this in game terms. So I'm going to bring him down here. So this is within, I, I, I don't know if I have it at four or five hexes for, it, like I said, it's not really visual because they can actually see much further, uh, but let's call it react visual. And you can see when it's their turn, now these guys might, might jump in um so we'll we'll end it and my turn and here they come so you can see just my just this guy being here has triggered all these guys um since since this guy is now engaged and you know they have odds against him here some of these guys said you know what we're gonna go back this way and find another target and that's what's happening now um and if I if I keep playing this, they'll they'll eventually surround him, get four to one odds here. The rest of these guys will keep going here. Once he's defeated, they'll all come back the other way. I'm not gonna play that all. It would probably take a while, but um, just wanted to give you guys a taste of some of the AI I'm working on. Would love to hear your feedback. Uh, I know there's other developers out there. Would love to hear you know if you've experienced co trying to code some of this stuff yourself. Let me know. Um, and as always, thanks for watching and uh, happy gaming. Till next time.